This program is brought to you by Stanford University. Please visit us at stanford.edu. So the point of today's lecture is to basically go over and quantify what uh, we talked about on Friday, this aphoresis machine, where you kind of now have a good idea about what this process is, but we're actually going to go through a simplified flow diagram uh, that Channing's spelled out here, uh, simplified schematic. Um, and fill in the streams. So it's sort of like what I did last time, where I was going through the oil plant, but we're actually going to fill in numbers. Uh, so I guess where to start? It's pretty simple. Uh, he showed us this, so you'll get this in homework problems and I guess in your life as a chemical engineer, where you'll either be making this or somebody will give this to you and you need to fill it in. So the basic, basically what we have here in this process is there's two main uh, like actual operations where we kind of separate, where we have the, that centrifuge, where we separate things, and then we have this uh, collector. Everything else is just combining and adding streams and diluting down. So we're going to go and find out the composition of all these streams and the flow rate. And Jesse gives us these definitions at the bottom. So where we're using the x, it's a volume fraction. Uh, for a lot of this we're going to go through, we're going to actually see that the, we're going to follow not the platelet uh, volume, but we're going to follow just the platelet number because they have a very small volume. So we can get away with that. Um, the w is the white blood cell, so we're going to have the volume fraction of the white blood cells. And then uh, the, super, the subscript a is the anticoagulant. And these m's are the mass flow rates. So just that's how we're going to describe this in all these equations. And basically everything I'm going to show you is in your book, and we're just going to describe that along the way. Um, so we have this process, and then he's going to give us a bunch of Basically, we're going to go through and think about what's known in this process. So these are basically a bunch of design specs or specs of either design specs of equipment in the process or design specs of what you want out of the process. So we talked a little bit about this on Friday where we know the composition of whole blood, where uh, the red blood cell count is about 0.5 volume fractions. Uh, he gives this number for platelets. Sorry. And we're going to be uh, filling in all this very conveniently on the side here. And I did much better than, uh, than last year when Channing made me do this, where I actually provided a list. So you didn't have to like look up here and do it. And we can do it very, hopefully very smoothly, and it'll like develop very nicely. Let's see. That's the plan. That's the scheme. We'll see if it happens. Um, so we know platelets, white blood cells, and then he gives us this, this mass, uh, or this basically this volume flow rate of how much we're drawing in. It actually seems like a large number to me, uh, but we're going to go with it. And basically, uh, he gives us this little note of what determines this, and it's determined by um, the amount of, it's determined by this basically constraint of how much anticoagulant you can have in the blood. And, when Channing originally worked this problem 30 years ago, or whenever he did this, the first time, he used this equation, he plugged in somebody's weight, and then he basically used that to get uh, this design spec where he knew that the mass flow rate of stream B, so I'll show you that in a second, over the mass flow, or the, sorry, not mass, this is volume, the volume flow rate of B over A is 0.1. And then, uh, that's how you kind of determine this. So right away, we're already thinking about the process a little bit and not doing any mass balances, but we're using uh, the design constraints to come up with these values. And just, I don't know, when I was going over this, it's, I guess we keep it over there. That's why, uh, that's why he has us draw it over here. So we can actually keep it up. So the B being this line over that one. I won't zap you, don't worry. <laughs> I'll try not to at least. Um, there's some other important design constraints here. Uh, what do we got? So diluted whole bloodstream, that's D. So D 
is this is a design constraint where we're saying basically um, the centrifuge works best. Who knows why? It just is. Other constraints, so he doesn't write it up here, but we use it later on. The separator is 70% efficient, so it removes 70% of the platelets that go in. Uh, what else do we got here? So he has these streams here, E and F, where we don't know anything about them, but he's labeling them. Uh, stream H. So stream H is basically how much we can concentrate these, pl these platelets in the end. So presumably if you do it, if you go to a higher concentration than that, they become unhappy and they lice or something. So that's just a constraint. Um, and then again, another design constraint, L, where we know basically how well our centrifuge is going to compact. So he has these, he's going to show sometimes like RBC, red blood uh, count, or something like that. And then like PPP, which is platelet poor plasma. So these are sort of weird abbreviations that you might have to think about a little bit. Everybody on board? OK. You guys I, see this? Sort of. Um, I don't know what good stories he has for this. He didn't give me any. He kind of went over this in about five minutes. He's like, OK, do it. OK. OK. Will do. OK. So Channing's first, uh, so I guess have, nobody's really done one of these balances yet. I guess that's the next, uh, yeah, that more in the next homework, where, I mean, there's obviously a lot of things you can do with this. I mean, there's lots of different, so you, you've been introduced to the idea, I think, that if you draw a box around any part of the plant, all the streams that go in um, should equal the streams that go out in terms of mass and volume and composition, uh, assuming you don't have any reaction. So you can basically draw lots of boxes to start. And what he decided to do here is just to start by drawing a box around the whole process, where we have two streams going in, this A and B, where A is the blood and B is this anticoagulant, and then it's going out three places, where M is back into the patient, H is basically our product, and J is, I guess in essence, sort of a waste stream. Uh, that's our, just our plasma, uh, or platelet poor plasma. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically go through and look at the, the red blood cells, we're gonna keep track of the red blood cells, and we're gonna keep track of the platelets, and we're gonna keep track of the mass. We're gonna only pay attention to the anticoagulant uh, for the first step, and I think this is just to keep things simple because after describing this, you're going to get really tired of me basically saying that what goes in what equals what goes out. So we're just eliminating one of those so nobody gets too bored and falls asleep. Um, <coughs> let's see. So first step, uh, we get a little bit so. In going over this, we did actually write down all the design constraints in that, in that first picture. Where he's basically saying, so we, get a we, we sort of get a little bit more information about what the actual design constraints are by what he determines here, by what he shows here, because he shows that basically the red blood cells going in, so the mass flow rate of A and the uh, volume fraction, equals what's going back into the patient. So, He's basically stating that these streams don't have any red blood cells in it. So we have these very pr good, uh, good separators that all the red blood cells go in, go back into the patient. We're not extracting any of those. So have that simple equation, solve it for M. We can all do this. And we get this uh, mass flow rate of stream M. And that's here, and it's, point, and it's 66 mils a minute. So this is good. This makes sense. Um, if you were sitting on an apheresis machine for two hours and this thing was off a little bit, you'd either be feeling very bloated or very dehydrated, and that would be terrible. So obviously, you want to be at steady state here. So this is another example of that. Um, so now we do the overall. So now he's going to do the overall mass balance for this, where two. 
where we have two streams going in, A and B, and then we have these streams coming out, and they just cancels the two things that we know. So we know that um, A and B, so sorry, A and M are the same, so those cancel, and we get this. And we also know that B, mass B, is 6.6 .6 mils a minute. Do you have that written up there? And that's due to that design constraint that I talked about earlier. So this is getting really exciting. We're starting to fill stuff in. And now he's going to write down this platelet balance for the overall process. And we can't really do much about this. This is really what we're trying to determine. So at the moment, we can write down this equation and just proceed forward. So um, kind of the common theme of how to go about doing this is to just start at a place, write down equations. If you can't, write, if you can't solve an equation, just place it, write it down, and move on. And assuming that every other equation you write down subsequently is correct, you'll be able to go back and solve these. So it's bad to not have enough equations, but having more than you need is not a bad thing. So on to A. This is real exciting. So on to this unit, where we're basically just combining um, stream A and stream B to get stream C. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to state everything here. I guess you're all in college. You can all read this. But uh, So I guess the thing I haven't talked about at the moment yet is the, uh, the volume fraction of the anticoagulant. So he basically said, and that's basically given by the, uh, he stated up here, he gave the composition of it. He said that on Friday that sodium citrate was the anticoagulant, and we know it's, we know the, the volume. He gives us basically uh, the mass percentage <coughs> that we can just calculate there. Okay. So that's exciting. Maybe not. Nobody's excited? Okay. It's Monday. You have a field trip. Do you get field trips for your other college classes? I don't think I ever had a field trip in college. That's not true. For one of my chemical engineering class, I just didn't, I didn't go on it. That's what happened. For my, my intro chemical engineering class, they had a, it was this terrible thermodynamics class. Yeah. Um, it was one of the few classes I systematically skipped in college. Uh, and I think they had a field trip, but I don't know, because I wasn't there. But they took you to the power plant. Like, I went to the University of Washington, and they had a power plant. So that was real chemi, right? They'd like, show you like, steam being pumped around. So, but this is cooler. You get to go outside. It's a beautiful day. Go on a bike ride. OK. We know this. OK. Just, you get the theme here to writing overall balances. Um, I guess repetition, right? That's the, a good way to learn things. So uh, the mass flow rate out, stream C, equals the two flow rates in. So we know these two. So I guess we can all add. You get 66 plus 6.6, 72.6. So that's what this stream is. So then you basically, so now what we're going to basically do is we're going to calculate the dilution factors or how much the red blood cells are getting diluted, how much the anticoagulants getting diluted, and how much the platelets are being diluted. And this is just uh, this is just cake. Uh, you just write these down. Uh, the mass flow rate A. So this is all in volume fractions. Is it annoying for me to just be saying the same thing? I don't know. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I was, I was afraid of this. I was trying to, I was, when I was going over this, I'm like, how am I going to make this interesting? And it just uh, wasn't, wasn't going to happen. So uh, that's life. Um, so the mass flow rate in uh, times the volume fraction of red blood cells equals the mass flow rate out. So we just calculated that here. And then we can solve for this. So algebra, so it gets diluted down from 0.45 to 0.41. Um, the anticoagulant, uh, so the anticoagulant's coming in from stream B. Uh, 
and we know the volume fraction 0.022, and then we know this stream again, so it's the exact same calculation. You get the dilution factor, and you can do platelets. Um, here, we're just using the number of platelets per microliter, but that's okay, because <coughs> you have like conservation of platelets, basically. Um, and you can calculate the volume fraction of the platelets. Okay. Yeah, it'll be okay here. At the end, we'll have to go back and we'll have to convert um, platelets to volume. So that'll be a different type of equation. Uh, we'll actually get to calculate the volume of something, so like pi r cubed or something like that. Um, on to process B, which is just a mixer. Or, so maybe at this point, it's good to look ahead of terms of what is actually happening in this process. So um, we have the separator, and the separator is going to have two streams coming out, uh, one that basically is going to have our platelets and our plasma, and then this is part of the stream is going to be recycled back, and then part of the stream is going to be basically enriched in concentrated blood. So stream E here is basically that recycle stream, which we don't have a lot of information on at the moment. We do know that it doesn't have any red blood cells, because that's just how our separator works. Um, we don't know the composition of the platelets. We don't know its mass flow rate. Um, stream C, we know basically everything about, and we just calculated that. And then stream D has information that we don't know about. But we do know, so we don't know the composition of this, but we know what we want it to be. So we want it to be this 0.32. So it's just a little bit variation. We're actually uh, on what was before in terms of we're actually going to determine the composition of streams later on by basically specifying this here. So red blood cell balance, same as before. We have red blood cells here, and they end up here. There's nothing here. So we can use that to calculate. Basically, we can use this design spec basically uh, determines the flow rate in this stream. And it gets 93 mils a minute. OK. So we can now use the overall balance to basically specify to get information about what stream E needs to be. Uh, so we just do the overall balance, and we get the stream E equals 20.4 mils a minute. And then you can do the platelet balance. But there's basically, uh, this is an equation that we don't have much information on. We know these flow rates, but we don't know the composition of platelets in at least two of these streams. So he labels this 1P, and we're just going to leave it. And then we're going to come back to that once we have a few other equations. Onward and upward to the separator. So um, stream D. We know the mass flow rate. We know its composition. We don't know the platelets. We don't know the anticoagulant. Um, once again, we know from the design specs what the stream out is going to be, but we don't know anything else. And we know that this doesn't have red blood cells due to the design constraint. Back to the red blood cell balance, where um, same as before, nothing new. Uh, <laughs> this times this, basically, equals what's coming out, the, the volume fraction of what's coming out uh, times the mass flow rate. And we solve it. Am I being bad with my laser pointer? Or am I just going all over the place? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, There's no red blood cells coming out in the stream. Yeah. Right. It's a really good separator. So F is this recycle stream. This is basically what's going to have our pl It's going <laughs> to. It's not that powerful a laser. It's a few, mi few microwatts or something like that. A few milliwatts, sorry. Two. Where uh, this is uh, 
this is basically what we're trying to produce. This is our product stream. So this has, plat this has platelets and plasma and no red blood cells. And in the end, it's going to feed into the stream, and then this is our product. So no red blood cells. I don't know if that's a realistic design constraint, but he's giving it to us. Um, 41.3 ml, overall balance to get the mass fill rate of F, 51.7. Now what he does is he writes down a few more platelet balances. So this is really what we're after with this whole thing, is how much of this, uh, how much of, the, of these platelets are we going to be able to gather? How much, how much product are we going to be able to make? How much are we going to be able to extract from all the cancer patients to, you know, to sell them? You know, this, is, this is what you're concerned about as a chemical engineer. Uh, and he writes an overall platelet balance. But he also uses the design constraint of the separator, where he says that this thing's 70% efficient. So you can write the overall balance for this process, where these two stream, this stream equals these two streams. But you also know you have more information, because he said it's 70% efficient. So you know that basically 30% of the platelets are going to end up in stream L, and 70% are going to end up in stream F. So same idea, but using information in a little bit different way. OK. C. I was getting a little confused because I had D and C. I guess it makes sense, right? Uh, so now we're going back to this basically the separator, or not a separator. This is just this is like a T in a pipe. Some of the stuff's going this way, some of it's going that way. Just splitting the stream. So there's no, comp I mean, obviously by inspection, you can tell there's no composition change by all of these. But nevertheless, it's good to write down the equations. Yeah. So the overall mass balance on this thing, um, where we know it's going in, right? F, we calculated that before. And we know E, because we calculated that early on. So we can get information on G, 31.3 mils a minute. Um, platelet balance. So he, he, does, he just drops a little bit of algebra here. But basically, if you did the overall platelet balance, you'd see that it would cancel down to this, where you just know that basically this, the, the fraction of, or the concentration and platelets per microliter remains the same in these two streams. Labels that 5p. And now you go back to those equations that we had before, and you solve them. So he didn't actually do that. I guess even that was too boring to put up here, right? So actually putting down the algebra to solve like four equations, but everybody can do that. Here are the answers you get. So now you basically filled in values that we didn't know before. I didn't actually go through and do that. Maybe somebody should see if it's actually right. I don't know. Presumably it is. OK. There aren't too many more slides here. I don't know how he takes a whole lecture with this. Maybe he wants to get out of here earlier so we can go on the field trip. It's more exciting. Um, Maybe he talks about microwaving cats. Yeah. Did he, mic he microwave a cat? Two. Two, of them. Two of them. Oh, I remember the story, yeah. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah, that was, man. <laughs> You're probably not going to get that this year with it being filmed and all, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah, the microwaving cats. OK. Um. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't have the stories. I need to work on that. I mean, if they, is, I guess that's maybe what you're supposed to learn when you TA as a graduate student. You're supposed to like, entertain people, right? I don't know. Finishing early it means you haven't told them stories. I don't know. <laughs> should take in, like, a drama class in college. I recommend, that's, that'll be my, my advice here, you should take a drama class, because then when you're in my situation, 
you'll be uh, more equipped to handle, handle everything. Um, stream D. OK. This is an interesting stream, I guess, because it's, this, is, this is a little bit different than before. So we actually uh, are now going to go back and we're going to calculate something that we already calculated before uh, as a sort of a check that what we've done up to this point is correct. So L, we know, flow rates, concentration. Um, we know what the, we know the concentration of the red blood cells is up here from our design spec. And then you go write down the red blood cell balance, and then you calculate stream M again. And you get 66 mils a minute. This is great. So everything that Channing has written down is probably correct. It should, should be, because he's been showing this for 30 years. <laughs> and <laughs> If nobody had caught the mistake in that time, that would be kind of terrible, right? Because nobody would be paying any attention. Uh, so we get that value. It's the same. Uh, it happens. I took a, a class for somebody where a professor had showed a, a slide of a, from some paper or something like that. It was like a 30-year-old paper, and he was talking about how great it was. And then somebody basically pointed out there was a, an error in the notation. It was sort of embarrassing. It wasn't his paper, but uh, you could be showing that for so long, and nobody catches it. But that's when you're doing stuff that's not that important, right? So uh, when you're just doing science, you can, you can write down an equation and have nobody catch it for 30 years, because nobody really cares about that equation. Uh, if something is wrong in your apheresis machine, like somebody will die or they'll get infected, and you end up catching things pretty quickly, uh, at least empirically. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, the overall balance, did I already say this before? Oh, now we get to get K, stream K. Because we have to, so basically stream K is diluting down this concentrated stream. Um, and we just know that flow rate. Well, we can just calculate it because we know what the concentration is. Same thing as before. Platelet balance. So now that we can actually do the platelet balance here, and because we now know the platelet concentration, concentration in, what do we know? Do we know this, actually? So we know ML, um, and we know ML, and we know ML, sorry. This flow rate and this platelet concentration equals this flow rate and this platelet concentration. So he's putting, plugging in and getting Y. So the concentration of platelets in this stream is 0.96. So this is down significantly from what we started with. So that's good, right? Because if there were more platelets, that would be terrible, because um, you would have created platelets in this machine. I guess that wouldn't be bad, but it wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> and if it was the same number, um, you would have just been wasting your time, uh, and nobody would be happy. The cancer patients wouldn't have any platelets, and the donor wouldn't feel good, because they wouldn't be donating anything. So. That makes sense, probably, <coughs> you'd think. You think I would, do you think you get big cookies? Or, I actually got really tired of the cookie, I have to say. Nice thing about being in the biochemistry department, for at least where my lab is, as opposed to the chemical engineering department, is they supply cookies at 4 o'clock. Every day? Every day. Work day, not on weekends. And so it's once a month. Once a month? That's terrible. The cookie hour. So was the, uh, the founder of the department insisted on this. Is it's a good way to encourage communication. And it is, right? So everybody kind of runs up from their lab seat at 4 o'clock, runs out, grabs a cookie. Maybe if they're greedy, they take two, and runs back to their, to their desk. It's very very good social hour. Um, 
So you don't have to but donate blood. You can just like walk to the biochemistry department. <laughs> um, oh, platelet balance for the overall system. This is actually written very confusingly. Um, there's like should be a space here, so he basically writes down the platelet balance here, and then he solves it. So there's nothing new here, but this isn't some like weird equation that has wrong units and stuff like that. Um, so he writes down the platelet balance, which, being I've described this ten times before, uh, I'm sure you can understand it. I think this might be the last slide next. Man. What time does class get over? 305. 205, 3, 315, whatever. <laughs> um, let's see. OK, this is a little bit different. So we want to know not the number of platelets coming out in this stream, but the volume, uh, so we can get a flow rate. Uh, so the equation for that, or you can just think about it, is basically the volume fraction of platelets is equal to the volume of the platelets multiplied by the number of platelets per microliter. And it gives us this equation, uh, pi over 6 d cubed. So that must be like for an ellipsoid or something like that. Does anybody remember? what shape that is, or if it, maybe it's just some empirical thing. I don't know. Is that a, like a real ge geometric object? Does anybody remember? OK. <laughs> it's not 4 thirds pi or q. That's the only one I know. Uh, so you get some equation that says the volume of these things. And then it gives us the design spec, or the, just the reality that there spheres of a diameter of three microns, OK? Uh, plugs that in. It's pi r cubed. That is? is it? No, it's not, I guess. Wait. It's like pi over three Wait. r cubed. The d is the diameter, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. pro, 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 it's it's it is pi r cubed. No. That's the diameter, though. Well, cause yeah, because it's 8 it's 6, which is 4 eight, thirds. Four yeah, that is pi r cubed. Yeah, so OK. That makes five. sense. It's the d. I was thinking, oh, that's what happens when you go over things at midnight. Uh, that makes sense. Good. You get, you just plug everything in. You get 2.21 mils a minute. Uh, Overall systems balance. So he does this overall systems balance just as a check uh, to get MJ. So we know this basically this waste stream is that. I was actually surprised when you think about it. this. Number seems a little bit high to me because he said this is for two hours and basically uh, you you get about two tablespoons out at the end. So I don't know. <laughs> I didn't think about it a whole lot more than that, but. We, maybe we can ask like what the actual flow rate is that they get. But that's what he gets when he puts all these design specs in. And it's certainly reasonable uh, uh, given, I mean, this is obviously the correct answer given uh, what we know going in. But uh, it seems like a high number when you actually think about like, your body sitting there. OK. My name is Mars Malari, and I'm the manager for the automate, automated collection services. Uh, we do apodesis here at Stanford Blood Center. We do about uh, about 8,500 procedures a year with about 20,000 products. And, and everybody knows what apodesis is. It comes from a Greek word meaning uh, app, meaning to separate, um, to separate into uh, components, platelets, plasma, red cells. And if we collect white cells, then we can also separate them into uh, polymorphonuclears or mononuclears. We have three machines, the uh, Trima, the uh, Amicus, and the uh, Spectra. We use only the Spectra for research, but for, um, for the donation, we use the Trima and the Amicus. And I got to, um, 
uh, assistant, uh, Rico, who will show the amicus, and Sigrid who will show the trima. I will show you the spectra, which is the, the white cell collection. So when they, uh, when they separate into components, it will be red cell, plasma, and platelets, and also white cells. And these are the indications for, uh, for these components. Uh, red cells for the surgical, anemic, cancers, and trauma cases. Plasma for this uh, group of patients, for those with clotting deficiency, intravascular deficits, and bleeding disorders, usually burn victims. <clears throat> Platelets are more for uh, clotting, so these are the group for, uh, for um, platelets. The white cells we usually do for, um, for research. We can do uh, stem cells, dendritic cells, or whatever is needed. Granulocytes is for uh, like a last ditch effort to uh, save the patient, and everything else fails, and so there's a big, big uh, infection. So we'll, we'll try to uh, give them white cells. So here's the spectrum machine. This was developed in, in the 1980s. And from this, it developed the trima, which they're looking at now. Uh, this is the same machine that we use for therapeutics, plasma exchanges for uh, Glenbore. Those This is entity, entity that has the the uh, modulate uh, 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 this is uh, what we call it like the antigen antibody reaction in the plasma so when you take out the abnormal plasma and replace it with with the uh, normal plasma usually the patient gets well with Galenbore it takes about five uh, plasma exchanges for them to become good anyway we use all the all the all the machine uses a single kit disposable uh, this is an expired one, so I, I can use this one show you. So this will um, uh, show you the procedures, what to do. This is the centrifuge. It's a single stage continuous. Uh, it will have a belt for this, where after the, um, when it's turning, it is about the specific gravity. So anything that's against the wall will have the heaviest. Um, it will separate into these components. So the red cells will be here because they're the heaviest, and the plasma and platelets will be here. So if you're like collecting stem cells or dendritic cells, your, your interface will be uh, some sort here on this color. And then if you like granulocytes or the polymorphonuclears, it'll be about here. So, so it's more color spectrometer. So these are the tubes. So and they'll put the ACDA and the uh, saline, and then the bags. Um, any questions for this? You just want to see it. <laughs> So it's the belt is on the centrifuge and this comes up underneath. Okay, I'll show you this. So this one goes like this. Everything has to be really um, crap. If not, if there is something that's like not, uh, it's like sticking out with the centrifuge, it will shear up, and you'll have a mess, big blood. All, all this has um, like a, a moist detector. It has the gauges. It has the um, air pressures. Everything is um, everything is uh, monitored. So it takes, uh, for white cell, it takes about three hours to, uh, to run the procedure. Two arms, one goes in, one goes out. You said the dendritic cells are interface. How do you separate those out? 
Um, by centrifugation. I mean, but can you separate them from between two phases? Yeah. Yeah. Um, when they go out of the channels, when they go out from here, yeah. it will set. It's already separated. Okay. That's why they call. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so it takes about three hours, um, five minutes to set up and five minutes to re rinse back. You lose about about 30 ml inside the blood that you cannot rinse back. So you return whatever is not needed. From this machine, like I said, the, uh, the trima developed and the amicus. Any other question? Do they still use this then? Yeah. This is, actually there's a new generation called the Optia. It's about 67,000. Okay. Uh, but right now it's only licensed for, dollars? yeah. Is it it's only licensed efficient? for, uh, yeah, it's very efficient. It doesn't lose as much platelets because it has a dual mechanism that prevents uh, your losing the platelets. So it's good for uh, chemo patients. Uh, for donation, we use this donation. most of the time. Re for research, we do uh, research Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Yeah. We use this one. Yeah. Okay. Then dendritic cells are are like stem cells. They right now the research focuses on uh, vaccinating those dendritic cells. So the patient comes in, we take out the dendritic cells, and then we process the dendritic cells, vaccinate them with the, the tumor antigen. So when it, it's infused back to the uh, patient it will attack the tumor. They're in the clinical uh, trial phase three now. So, so this is a trima. It will collect uh, platelets, plasma, and red cells, or combination. Like platelets, they, it can collect up to three units of platelets, and two units of plasma, and one red cell. It has the same mechanism, or, or centrifuge but simpler because it's more uh, for, uh, for just the three components. This one is a, a bigger cassette. And everything is incorporated to it. This, there's a way of... Uh, it's supposed to be bags. This is for the plasma. And the platelets. Or oh, red cells. There's a filter on the red cell, so everything's look reduced. But the look reduction is done afterwards. Um, for this one, the platelets are look reduced because of the LRS system. This will have um, a white cell concentrate. And I did a study for this, comparing it with the whole blood buffico, and the lymphocytes here are are equal, if not greater. Lymphocytes are now the, uh, the thing that the risk, a lot of researchers <coughs> like. So it's the same thing. You always put it inside. So these are the full, this is the full setup. Mm -hmm. 
and you can hear the clicks when you're setting up. The Optia is almost like this. It's like, it's like they combined the spectra and the trima. In the, in the presentation last week, they put uh, dad and mom, and then equals the Optia. <laughs> so you can collect uh, up to six products, but if you count this, seven products per one donation. So it's a very efficient uh, donation uh, machine. This one takes about 90 minutes. Yeah. Faster. Mm -hmm. While you're donating, uh, you can watch a movie. Mm -hmm. We have uh, we have a library there, and also we have Netflix. Or you can surf the net. This uses one arm. So, any other question for this? Okay. Hope you become donors. <laughs> Only five percent of all the. Uh, population donates. How do you become a donor? You become a donor, uh, you donate one one time whole blood, mm -hmm. so we can type you. Mm -hmm. Here at the Stanford, we, we're like the boutique of all the blood centers. Mm -hmm. We can type specific a lot of donors. Okay. Uh, in whole blood, it takes about six donors to comprise one functional unit. With apidesis, it's only one donor for one patient, so it's more, more type specific, so the reactions are lesser. So if you donate blood, you should do this instead of the whole blood? I mean, it depends on your blood type. That's what I should say. Okay. If, if you're like type O, red cells are more important. If you're type AB, plasma are needed. For platelets, it's, it's, it's okay. I mean, um, we have to limit the plasma because of the uh, trolley. The trolley is the uh, transmission-related acute lung injury. It's happening now because of the plasma. If you get pregnant, then antibodies develop. This is the Amicus from Baxter Company, or Fenwell now. They just been bought up last month. <laughs> so it's the same thing as Trima, they're competitors. But I like this one because it can use one arm or two arms. And the, uh, the pressure going to the donor is not as much as in the Trima. Um, when they're drawing blood, it creates pressure. This has a vacuum inside. That's why you can draw the blood. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's locked. But this one has a different uh, centrifuge. Once they're done, I'll open that one. But it has cassettes too. So, it has a touch screen. <laughs> So this, this is called the uh, upper umbilicus. Excuse me. So here, it's a different kind of, uh, see the belt? In the trima, uh, once the product comes out, it's already in the bag. This one, the platelet concentrate will come here. Then at the end of the procedure, you have to reconstitute them. So, although I think this is a better platelet harvester because it um, harvests all sizes of the platelets. On the three it's only like the middle size. But both are local reduced. And the te technology has only been around for about 17, 20 years. And it's going faster. I've seen new machines last, last week. I was in a conference. And they have the symbol this big battery power to red cells. So this is the amicus. Uh, I'll show you the last one. <coughs> the last one is the Alex, also from Penwell. This has the capability of uh, collecting two red cells, or one red cell and two plasma, up to three plasma. Uh, it's designed for mobile, so we can go to places. Uh, it's, it's like this kit, so I have this. So it's the same thing. Um, it, has a, it has a screen that walks you through the procedure. Uh, this is about 30 minutes. 
So if you're like going to a mobile site, it's better to just have uh, you know the Alex because it's more cost efficient. And 30 minutes, you got two units of red cell. So it's a really good machine. How much is a unit? Um, I think about a hundred dollars. I mean, think let's no, about six hundred. No, how much does it cost? How much is it like volume wise? Volume wise is about two hundred fifty ml. Mm -hmm. Although the plasma can be four fifty, five fifty, and six fifty. So about five hundred. And but it has a uh, saline. So it uh, whatever it takes from you, it is uh, replaced. Actually, some donors prepare this because they say they feel better. Mm -hmm. Because in whole blood, there's nothing to compensate from the loss, mm -hmm. and it's the same amount that you're losing, only longer. So that's the Alex. Okay, I think we're done. Thanks for uh, your interest with the uh, apodesis. <laughs> it's really cool to have all this technology. It's, be it's for the patient. Everything's for the patient. Mm -hmm. So do you ship this back to the Stanford Hospital? Or where yeah, we're the main uh, supplier for uh, Stanford. Uh, and remember, platelets are only good for five days. After testing, it's only good for three days. And how often can you donate? You can donate every uh, two weeks. 24 times a year. Uh, inside our body, the platelets only live inside for 10 days. So outside the body is five days. But it's, there's always the need for platelets. Can you show us what platelets and plasma look like outside, separated? Yeah, we just... <laughs> it took you up. <laughs> uh, in the, it's in the level right now. Okay, don't worry. It's yellow. Yellow? Yeah, right. see yellow products. Um, platelets as well? Hmm? Platelets as well? Yes. Okay. Platelets are suspended in plasma. The machine is already doing a quality control. Now, it says there, do the quality uh, control of the machine. So we have to weigh it. This is a 1,500 grams. So we do this every time you operate the machine. The first time that you open it, you have to do this. So, meaning that you have, it can collect the proper product, okay? Okay, it says don't load the kit yet. Once the test, the quality control of the machine is done, it will show you a check. That means you can load the kit now. And it will take like three minutes. If you want to wait, I can load the machine and you can see. Because this one has a very small, tiny centrifuge. Unlike the other one, the other two, the centrifuges are very big, very large. So this is our kit. Don't worry, these are for training purposes. By the way, the kit is worth like $150 each. So if you screwed with it, that's it. $150 goes to waste. So you have also the anticoagulant, the saline solution, and the adsol. The adsol, it mixes with the product, the red cell, so it doesn't clap. And this is the centrifuge. You see how small it is? 
and this is the filter. Well, if you are, if you have some classes to attend, you can go and you can just come back anytime. So we can explain it to you. Or during our regular operating uh, days, so you can see the procedure, how it works. From the time we hook the donors, you know, if you can wait until the time they're done, which is very nice. Don't worry, you, you won't be hungry. We have a lot of cookies over there. <laughs> when are your regular afternoons? Every day is from 7 to 3. And Wednesday and Thursday, we start like noon, up to 8. And donors who are giving the two units of red cells, this is only, you can only do this like 30 minutes at the most. That's our regular donation time for this machine. But for these two machines, <coughs> it's like an hour and an hour and a half. The platelets is uh, very hard to collect than the red cells. See, you have the check there. So the operator is me. And you are collecting two units of red cells, two RBC, the other one is one RBC and plasma. Okay, it says ready to uh, load the kit. So this one goes to the The saline solution goes here. This is the filter. And this is the storage bag for the product. It's two. This one collects the plasma, letter P. And this one collects the whole blood. While it's drawing from the donor, everything, all the, uh, all the blood will go here. It's like a blood, uh, reservoir bag. And this is the one that collects the red cells before it goes to the filter. Okay, this one is just like the Three boxes over there you have seen, the pocket. And this is the needle that you hook to your donors. Okay, that's it. It will turn. And once you close this one, this won't give way. It's already fixed and keeps on turning. Now you're ready to operate the machine. Okay? All you have to do is to hook the needle to your donor. And remember, the Alex machine collects two units of red cells or one unit of red cells and two units of plasma. No platelets. All right? That one, the Amicus and the Trima, it collects everything. Except white cells. The white cells is for that one machine. Okay? The preceding program is copyrighted by Stanford University.
please visit us at stanford.edu.